First off, I'd like to thank the pastor and the congregation for allowing me to come and speak to you. If you'll indulge me a second, I need to get something here. As all of you have, like me, has become gray, I have also become blind in the service of my country. I'd like to start off with a note I wrote to one of my officers in 1775. As the contempt of religion of a country is by ridiculing any of its ceremonies or affronting its ministers or voluntaries has ever been deeply resented, you are to be particularly careful to restrain every officer from such impotence and folly and to punish every instance of it. On the other hand, as far as lies in your power, you are to protect and support the free exercise of religion of the country and the undisturbed enjoyment of the rights of conscience in religious matters with your utmost influence and authority. I would also like to bring what I said in my final speech, my final address as President of the United States. While we are zealously performing the duties of good citizens and soldiers, we certainly ought not to be inattentive to the higher duties of religion, to the distinguished characters of a patriot. It should be our highest glory to add the more distinguished character of a Christian. Of all the dispositions and habits which lead to political prosperity, religion, and morality are indispensable supports. In vain would be that the man who claimed tribute of patriotism who would labor to subvert these great pillars of human happiness, these firmest props of the duties of men and citizens. The mere politician, equally with the pious man, ought to respect and cherish them. A volume could not trace all their connections with private and public felicity. Let it be simply asked, where is the security for property, for reputation, for life? If the sense of religious obligation deserts the oaths, which are the instruments of investigation in the courts of justice? Let us with caution indulge the supposition that morality can be maintained without religion. Whatever may be conceded to the influence of refined education on the minds of a particular structure, reason, and experience, both forbid us to expect that the national morality can prevail in exclusion of religious principle. All the animosities which have existed among mankind, those which have caused by difference of sentiment in religion, appear to be the most invert and distressing, and ought most to be depleted, depreciated, excuse me. I was in hopes that the enlightened and liberal policy which has marked the present age would at least have reconciled Christians of every denomination so far as we should never again see religious disputes carried to such a pitch as to endanger the peace of society. And I'd like to end with this prayer. Almighty God and most merciful Father, who didst thou command the children of Israel to offer daily sacrifice to thee, that thereby they may glorify and praise thee for thy protection both night and day. Receive, O Lord, my morning sacrifice, which I now offer up to thee. I yield thee humble and hearty thanks that thou hast preserved me from the danger of the night past and brought me to the light of the day and the comforts thereof, a day which is consecrated to thy own service and for thy own honor. Let my heart, therefore, gracious God, be so affected with the glory and majesty of it that I may not do in my own works but wait on thee and discharge those weighty duties which requirest of me. And since thou art a God of pure eyes and wilt be sanctified in the draw near unto thee, who dost not regard the sacrifice of fools, nor hear sinners who tread thy court's pardon, I beseech thee my sins. Remove them from thy presence, as far as east is from the west, and accept me for the merits of thy Son, Jesus Christ, that when I have come into thy temple and can press thine altar, my prayers may come before thee as incense, and thou wilt hear me calling upon me in my prayers. So give me the grace to hear thee calling me unto thy word, that it may be wisdom, righteousness, reconciliation, and peace to the saving of the soul of the day in the day of the Lord Jesus Christ. Grant that I may hear it with reverence, receive it with meekness, mingle it with faith, that I may accomplish in me, gracious God, the good work for which thou hast sent it. Bless my family, kindred, friends, and country. 
Be our God and guide this day forever for his sake, who lay down in the grave and rose again for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In conclusion, so long as my conduct shall merit the approbation of the wise and good, I hope to hold the same place in your affections, which your friendly declaration induced me, I possess at present. And amidst all facilities that may await for me in the mutual existence, I shall earnestly desire the continuation of an interest in your intercessions at the throne of grace. I thank you for your indulgence.